Hello, this is the Daily Encouragement Message we've prepared for Tuesday, September 17th, 2024. We are Stephen and Brookseen Weber. Our goal when we write these messages and prepare them is to encourage and provide Bible teaching. Today we title the message taken directly from our text, I Know Whom I Have Believed. The Bible text is a great one from 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. For this reason, I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him until that day. We're studying 2 Timothy in our adult Bible fellowship class, and in many churches that's still known as Sunday school. We have a class with about 70 adults in it and uh, diligent students. When they're all there. When they're all there. I just looked at the roster, in fact, to see, mostly in our 60s and 70s. This last Sunday, we considered one of my all-time favorite verses. It has also been put to music in a hymn many of us old-timers will recall. In fact, we may have learned the scripture verse from singing the hymn, mm-hmm. for the, yeah. the uh, chorus states, But I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Well, that's the scripture text. This hymn was written by Daniel Whittle, who had enlisted in the 72nd Illinois Infantry during the Civil War and headed into the bloodiest conflict in America's history. He was badly wounded in the Battle of Vicksburg and then taken prisoner. Now, this is a little bit longer. I'm not sure how to work on the podcast, but we basically, for our message today, recorded his conversion experience in his own words. And we'll alternate the reading here. We had many engagements, and I saw many sad sights. And in one of the battles, I was knocked out. And that night, my arm was amputated above the elbow. As I grew better, having a desire for something to read, I felt in my haversack, which is like a backpack, which I had been allowed to keep, and found the little New Testament or actually just just says Testament, Testament. but my mother had placed there. I read through the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, to Revelation. Every part was interesting to me, and I found to my surprise that I could understand it in a way that I never had before. When I had finished Revelation, I began at Matthew and read it through again. And so for days I continued reading, and with continued interest, And still no thought of becoming a Christian. I saw clearly from what I read the way of salvation through Christ. While in the state of mind, yet still with no purpose or plan to repent and accept the Savior, I was awakened one midnight by the nurse who said, There is a boy in the other end of the ward, one of your men, who is dying. He has been begging for me for the past hour to pray for him or to get someone to pray for him, and I can't stand it. I'm a wicked man, and I can't pray, and have come to get you. Why, said I, I can't pray. I never prayed in my life. I'm just as wicked as you are. Can't pray, said the nurse. Well, I thought sure from seeing you read the Testament that you were a praying man. and You're the only man in the world that I've not heard curse. What shall I do? There is no one else for me to go to. I can't go back there alone. Won't you get up and come and see him at any rate? Well, moved by his appeal, I arose from my cot and went with him to the far corner of the room. A fair-haired boy of 17 or 18 lay there dying. There was a look of intense agony upon his face as he fastened his eyes upon me and said, Oh, pray for me, pray for me, I am dying. I was a good boy at home in Maine. My mother and father are members of the church, and I went to Sunday school, and I tried to be a good boy. But since I became a soldier, I have learned to be wicked. I drank and swore and gambled and went with bad men, and now I am dying, and I'm not fit to die. Oh, ask God to forgive me. Pray for me. Ask Christ to save me. As I stood there and heard these pleadings, God said to my soul by his spirit, just as plainly as if he had spoken in audible tones, You know the way of salvation. 
get right down on your knees and accept Christ and pray for this boy. I dropped upon my knees and held the boy's hand in mine. As in a few broken words, I confessed my sins and asked God for Christ's sake to forgive me. I believed right there that he did forgive me and that I was Christ's child. I then prayed for the boy. He became quiet and pressed my hand as I pleaded to the promises. When I rose from my knees, he was dead. A look of peace was upon his face. And I can but believe that God, who used him to bring me to my Savior, used me to get his attention fixed upon Christ and to lead him to trust in his precious blood. I hope to meet him in heaven. Well, years later, Whittle, and that's the end of that quote. Now it's our writing again. Years later, Whittle penned the words to, I know whom I have believed, as an expression of his testimony of faith in Jesus Christ. The psalmist expressed, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That's Psalm 37, verse 5. Committing and trusting is God's will for each one of us. In our class this last Sunday, we sang the hymn, I Know Whom I Have Believe It, which is far more than just a hymn. It is a statement of faith based upon Scripture, and it is one that is written in the first person, so that we can personalize it by making it our very own testimony, even today. Let's confess, along with hymn writer Daniel Webster Whittle, that while there is much we don't know, there is one whom we do know, and that is the person of Christ who redeemed us for his very own. And that last line is an allusion to one of the verses in the hymn, which we post today on our site. (laughs) Roxine, we'll pray. Let's pray. Father, there is so much more that I don't know than that which I do know. But that which matters most is that I know Jesus, your son, gave his all to ransom me from my sins. I don't know if I'll meet him in the air or when I cross over at the time of my death, but I know his spirit will guide me all my days. I don't know why I've been chosen among the elect to receive Christ but I am eternally grateful for his spirit that convinced me of my need for salvation. All I have need of your hand will provide and has provided, and all that I entrust to you will be safely guarded until the day that I find my resting place in heaven, the new Jerusalem. Thank you for sending Jesus to make it possible, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And we do have a version of that song by a band that for a number of years sang with the Bill Gaither vocal band, Marshall Hall. And he seems like he's with the group singing it. And we do post all of the lyrics because they're just, they're just wonderfully written in our view. Have a couple photos taken in our neck of the woods. The first one, well, no, only one, I guess, in Lancaster County. And that's a sunflower field over at the old windmill farm that is always a pleasant sight. And then a photo a friend to, uh, sent me from North Carolina. And I will read this one. It's a church sign. And it says this, This too shall pass. It might pass like a kidney stone, but it's going to pass. That's something to see. I'm sure that sign gets some attention. Well, thank you for joining us today for our daily encouragement message. This is the message we prepared Tuesday, September 17th, 2024. Our website is dailyencouragement.net. The title today, directly from that text and from that hymn, I Know Whom I Have Believed.